Wow, we did it. We finally made it through our last year of high school. It's been a long journey and it's not over yet. We're just beginning college, here we come. But which college? Where should I go? How do I decide? State schools, private schools, community colleges, in-state, out-of-state, international, liberal arts, Ivy League, public Ivy. There's too many of them. Help. Hi, friends. I'm Caroline, and I totally understand where you're coming from. I went through that life of trying to sort through colleges, and let me tell you, it can get overwhelming quickly. But have no fear, because we're going to get through this together by breaking down every step of preparing for college life. Now, I know you're probably getting a lot of opinions from a lot of people right now. Everyone has advice for which school you should go to. Mom, dad, your teachers, your friends, parents, Aunt Betty, Grandpa Joe, the mailman, your hairdressers, fifth cousin, twice removed. So how do you decide which colleges to apply for? Okay, well first, we need to narrow down your options so you don't waste time applying for schools that don't fit your needs. In today's lesson, we'll start by looking at the differences between state universities and private universities, and then discuss how you decide what's best for you. So let's start by asking, what exactly is a state university? State universities are publicly funded universities. They're supported by either individual states, territories, or federal districts. Because of the support they receive, state universities are able to lower tuition costs for students located in the same state. Ooh, as a side note, in-state means attending school in the state that you and whoever claims you as a dependent, usually your parents, are permanent residents of, while out-of-state means going to school in a different state. Now, many states have state university systems, with several or many colleges included in their system. The State University of New York has the largest system of community colleges, colleges, and universities in the world. California has two different four-year university systems, as well as a community college system. In 2019, approximately 14.5 million students attended public universities. Your neighbor, Ms. Petty, and some other pretentious people might look down their noses at publicly funded state schools. However, you can let Ms. Petty know that some of the highest ranked colleges and universities are state schools. There's even an entire category of state schools called Public Ivy. Uh, you've probably heard of Ivy League universities before. Ivy League refers to a group of eight private schools on the east coast of the US, known to be some of the best in the nation. The term public ivy was given to public universities that were considered to be just as prestigious as Ivy League schools. That should get Ms. Petty off your back. But just in case she needs more proof, let's go over some more of the pros to attending a state university. Pro number one, the cost. For 2020 to 2021, the average cost of tuition and fees at four-year public universities for in-state students was approximately $10,500. For out-of-state students, the cost was about $27,000. Meanwhile, average tuition for private four-year colleges ran up to 250% higher than in-state schools. That's a lot of money. Pro number two, location. This can be really important, especially if mom, dad, Aunt Betty, and Grandpa Joe are planning on visiting a lot. Of course, that could change this from a pro to a con for you. Oof. Going to an in-state public university means that you're more likely to be familiar with the area, weather, and local town life. If your home is close enough, you could even commute to school and save more money. Pro number three, size. Because of the lower tuition prices, state universities tend to be larger. There's usually a wide selection of degree plans, majors, and minors to choose between. Uh, for instance, Purdue University offers over 200 majors. The largest school size means that there are a greater number of student clubs, campus activities, and events, like concerts, tailgating, and more. Campus life is vibrant and diverse, with people from all around the world and all walks of life. Pro number four, funding. Because state universities receive public funding, they can support extra programs at their schools. 
For instance, the majority of Division I athletic teams are at public universities. There also tends to be a larger amount of research labs and facilities. Extracurricular activities abound, from intramural sports, to student government, to organizations like Greek life, artistic clubs, volunteer work, and much more. But now that we've gone through the pros, we have to touch on the cons as well. Shh! Don't tell Ms. Petty. Con number one, the size of the student body. Because state schools accept a larger number of students, there can be an overwhelming number of people on campus, especially if you grew up, like I did, as a homeschool student in a class of one. Being around so many people can be disorienting and a little bit scary. Con number two, the accessibility of professors. On the same note, because of the large amount of students, it can be much more difficult to reach professors at state universities. With smaller programs, you can form mentorship relationships with professors. However, at larger state colleges, there is a danger of becoming just a number in a class. It's understandably harder for professors to remember students as individuals when they're teaching hundreds of people every day. Con number three, the availability of classes. With hundreds of students needing to get into the same classes, it can be a challenge to get into all the courses you need, especially as a freshman. Most colleges operate on a system where the upperclassmen get to select their courses first, and the freshmen are the last to choose. At a larger state school, this can be a problem because classes fill so quickly. Hope you can hit that submit button faster than everyone else! Well, now that we've talked about the overwhelming selection of colleges and the pros and cons of state universities, you can face Ms. Petty with confidence. Next time we'll talk about private schools and how to decide which one to choose. But until then, keep constructing your college castle in the sky. Hey.